Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm Tony, and this is going to be the first Dialogger video that I make. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you how to uh, set it up, get it in your project, uh, set up a basic dialog, and then connect to that with a really, really basic uh, Unity GUI based um, dialog system. So, first, we're going to import the package into Unity. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the uh, examples folder. Just because we, we don't actually need any of these, you can uncheck that if you want. Or if you're just starting on Dialogger, you can take that into your project, look at all the examples, or even use the example skins if you want to. It's up to you. Um, so we're going to take that, put it into Unity. Oh, you guys will have to excuse me, I'm sick. So maybe I'll do another one when I'm not sick. Okay, so um, now that it's imported, uh, you'll see a dialoguer um, option. Uh, so these are these are your windows. Um, this is basically your dialog editor. This is your variable editor. We'll get into that later. Um, maybe in a different video, actually. Uh, this one, I'll, I'll explain all these later, actually. Um, anyways, so what you want to do right now is go open up your dialog editor. And that's going to give you the... This is the dialoguer interface. Um, so you can just go overhead and remove these. We can, we're going to create a new dialog. We'll call it test dialog. Okay, so now you have that named. Um, we're just going to throw in a basic text node. This is the first node. We're going to hook that up to the start. And then we'll throw in another one. This is the last node. Um, and actually, to show you a little bit more about it, I'm going to throw in a branch text node as well. So this is going to take um, this text. It's going to display the text in here, and it's going to display these choices. And based on the choice you choose, it will choose, or it will go into another node. So I'm going to hook this in. Uh, this is a branched text node. For this. Uh, I'm, I'm panning with the middle mouse button, so if you click the middle mouse button and you move your mouse, um, you'll pan the, the screen along. So I'm just going to set most chosen. Hook it up to here. And That up. So those are all hooked up. Um, this is your. It's just going to go through this flow based on this choice. It's going to select one of these two text nodes, and then they're just going to go back to the exact same node. And then I'm going to throw an end node in there, which signifies the end of the dialog. That's going to tell your your dialog GUI to just basically shut down. Um, so great, that's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, perfect. So I'm going to close that. Um, and that's basically all we need to do with Dialogger now. We don't need to go back into Dialogger for anything else. We have a dialog made. It's that simple. So now that we have created our dialog, we're going to create a um, two game objects. One is going to be one is going to initialize the the Dialogger system. The other one is going to be the GUI system. So we're going to create two um, scripts, one called init. I'm just going to drag that. I'm just going to drag that onto this game object. Oops. And another one called uh, dialogger GUI. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, actually, we're going to drag this on here first. And first, we're going to go into the init, um, the init class. So we're going to go into void awake. We're going to initialize dialogger. 
So you need to initialize Dialogger before you make any other Dialogger calls or else the Dialogger system is not ready to actually process dialogues or serve any of the events or dispatch any of the events. Um, so this needs to be called preferably right at the beginning of your game and in, in your main class. Um, and then from there you can go and actually um, listen to the events and all that stuff. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to um, let's go let's make Um, so this is just going to create a button um, that when you click it, it will actually start a dialogue. So let's go, um, and that will go dialogger dot start dialogue. We'll just do that. Okay. So also let's feed this. Uh, we're going to feed this uh, a callback. Let's go. Um, and here we're just going to uh, this enabled equals true. So now when you click the button, it's going to disable this this uh, component. Um, and then when the dialogue is finished, um, it will actually, uh, re-enable it and that way we'll be able to keep um, going into this dialog and keep just opening the dialog to test so let's rename this actually there we go so um, now now that we finish that that's not really going to do anything yet um, what it is going to do is it will show us the the button. We can start it, but there's no dialogue to display because we haven't hooked into the dialogue system yet. So now we're going to go into our dialogue GUI. Um, we're going to create a few methods. Um, so this is going to be called when the dialogue starts. That's going to be called when the dialogue ends. And this is going to be called when the dialoguer is serving new text data. So whenever uh, a dialogue phase is um, served by dialoguer, this event will be called and it will you will have a dialog or text data object with it. Um, that's going to contain your text, your choices if you're using a branch node, um, your metadata, your position data for the window. Uh, it's going to it's going to include everything you need to actually deal with the text at that point in the dialog, uh, making it super simple. It, regardless of of which type of phase it is, it's all going to be the exact same object. Um, so it makes it really really easy to deal with. So now we're going to uh, in started. We're going to go. We're going to add these events, or listen to these, or uh, dialogers events. Okay, so this still isn't going to do anything yet. That's just going to be firing these events off. Um, actually, let's delete this. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is in on GUI, we're going to um, first of all, uh, we're going to create a variable. So this is going to uh, detect whether or not we're showing uh, dialog. So we're going to set that to true in on started. 
and false in on ended. Um, so that way, when a dialog is started, we're going to show GUI for it, or a GUI for it, and when it's ended, we'll hide the, the GUI. The, uh, the GUI. So um, in here, we're just going to return Uh, that way we're just not doing anything if it's not showing. So still, if we go to hit play, um, we're not going to get anything yet. We haven't done anything yet to, to get anything. So let's do this. So let's go... So that's just going to be a box that shows up. Um, right now, it's not going to be displaying anything um, except for just a static, uh, static string. Uh, so what we're going to do now is create a variable to actually store the text data in. So we're going to in on text phase when we're served the data for each phase. Um, we're going to go text uh, equals data dot text. And now we can change this to text. Uh, and that way, we're going to be displaying the text data of our nodes. So now if we hit play, we're going to we'll get the start dialogger. Click that, and we get the first text node. That's the text for the first text node. Um, but we don't have any choices or any way to continue it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go dot, oops. Let's go 10. And uh, when you click the button, we want to go dialogue or dot continue dialogue, um, which is essentially going to move the dialogue forward. It's going to, when you hit continue dialogue, it's going to continue through the dialogue processing events and it will stop at the next text node. Now, if we go to play that, we're going to be able to play all the way through our dialogue. Start dialogue. So here's the first text node. Uh, continue, 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 continue. And that will take us all the way to the end. Um, what you'll notice though is that when we start the dialogue, um, we're, we're in it, we continue to the branch text, and we're only given a continue, we're not given the choices that were associated with the branch text. And if we hit continue, it, it selects the first one, um, and it doesn't give us a choice to actually select the other one. So what we're going to do now is add uh, another variable that will contain our choice data. Um, and then we can check uh, if so now if we don't have any choices we're going to just use the regular continue button that we used um, and if we do have choices we're going to loop through them Uh, and what we're going to do here is So that's just going to position them in order, I guess. Uh, it's going to stack them. Um, so then we're going to go dialogue dot continue dialogue. But instead of just calling the generic method, we're going to put i in there. Um, and adding a integer to this method call will continue the dialogue based on uh, the choice at that index. 
Um, so using using dialog or dot continue dialog without any um, any parameters will just continue it. It's the same as continuing with zero. Um, so if di if I put dialog or continue zero, that'd be the exact same thing as not putting anything in at all. But um, in this case, we're looping through all the choices and whichever one the player picks, we want to continue along that branch. So we're going to actually feed it the, the index of the choice that they select and we're going to continue along that branch instead. Um, so now something's wrong here. All right, so now if we go to play, uh oh, oh, right. Let's throw. The actual text in there. So now, if we go to play, we we'll start the dialogue. Uh, first node, continue. Our branch text node will give us two choices. We can continue along one of them. Um, choice two was chosen, and it's that's the the text node that was associated with their second choice. And then I'll continue to the last node, and then it's the end. And yeah, that's about it. It's that simple to create a very simple dialogue um, GUI for Dialogger, and very, very simple to create a dialog. Um, you can get a lot more in, in depth with it. Um, you can do anything with it. You, because it's, it's all event-based, you can literally go in and create any sort of GUI you want. Um, and then if you're not happy with that halfway through your project, you can switch it out for another GUI without having to change any of the backend stuff, only the, the GUI front end. Um, and that's it. It's, it's really, really simple, really, really intuitive. And I hope you guys like it.